What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American here today to react and learn about British foods. British foods. Now, let's get one thing straight here. I am American. I don't have time for these British foods. I like fast food. I like donuts. I like greasy Coca-Cola. <laughs> I don't have time for your beans and pies. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, if you asked an average American uh, what comes to mind when they think of British foods, um, I think a lot of them would immediately think of tea, for one thing, although that's a drink, of <laughs> obviously, unless you freeze it and licked it like a popsicle? Hmm. Anyway. <laughs> and, uh, beans? Beans. Uh, an average American would probably think of beans. Anyway, <laughs> my attempt to come up with British food basically leaves me at tea and beans, so unless uh, British people survive on only tea and beans, I'm probably a little uneducated in this area. Hence, the top 10 British foods that confuse the rest of the world. The title of this video I'm watching, I think that applies perfectly to me. So, uh, yeah, I say we take a look. For this list, we're looking at British foods that baffle foreign visitors, either because mm. their names are misleading, or because their ingredients are so in- I mean, yeah, off the bat here, I don't even know what I'm looking at. I mean, that's a bagel, but <laughs> I don't know what I'm looking at. Here, I can defend myself a little. that baffle foreign visitors, either- some kind of cake because their names are misleading or because they're all right don't get me wrong some of this looks okay but i feel like once i learn what's in it or something i'm kind of a picky eater to begin with even as far as american food goes so we'll see ingredients are so unusual it's a wonder anyone would choose to eat them number 10 okay. scotch eggs i don't think i should have eaten that scotch egg is that that egg with the sausage wrapped around it never mind not important this popular <laughs> well does that is that guy correct a scotch egg. I don't think I've ever heard of a scotch egg. I've heard of many different kinds of way to do eggs, to cook eggs. And Americans like eggs, don't get me wrong. Um, but I don't know what a scotch egg is. The British snack consists of a hard-boiled egg enclosed in sausage meat and breadcrumbs. London's Fortnum and Mason department okay. store supposedly invented them in 1738, although other sources claim they originated in Yorkshire. I'm not a huge egg guy to begin with. But I think as far as what's going to be on this list, this actually seems okay. I can I approve of this one. I'm okay with this. Uh, covered in meat and breadcrumbs. Honestly, if you cover anything in meat and breadcrumbs, you're I'm probably going to eat it. So it's, <laughs> it sounds good. The earliest recipe for Scotch eggs, at least in print, dates back to 1809, which recommended they be served hot with gravy, though they can okay. equally be eaten cold as a picnic food. The taste of scotch eggs can vary depending on where you eat them as well, with different UK regions using- I mean, somehow they got a clip here of Gordon Ramsay cooking it, and so... <laughs> if, if Gordon made me a scotch egg, I would definitely eat it, lest he yell at me or something. Although, I, I isn't Gordon much nicer in a lot of his UK stuff? In America, like Hell's Kitchen, man, he can be mean, but we we kind of like it. Using their own <laughs> local sausages in the dish. Michael, would you like a miniature scotch egg? Oh, not for me, pet. I've got myself a steak and kidney pie. Number nine, deep fried Mars bars. This nation brought the world television, the steam engine, golf, whiskey, penicillin, and of course, the deep fried Mars bar. You've Wait, did the UK actually invent all that stuff? But anyway, deep fried Mars bar. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like right up... Uh, the United States Alley. That's like, I'm shocked that wasn't invented in America. They could, someone in the UK should bring that to America and sell it. That'd make a killing if it's a deep fried candy bar. I mean, that sounds good. You find many unusual foods on a British chip shop menu, from curry sauce to mushy peas, but surely none is stranger than a deep fried Mars bar. These. Well, I mean, at fairs in America, like county fairs and Labor Day festivals and whatnot, there's deep fried everything. That's kind of a thing in America. It's almost like a joke in a way, but it's kind of serious because <laughs> we really do like it. But it's kind of a joke. You can just take anything. There's deep, deep fried Oreos, deep fried Twinkies, deep fried Mars bar. 
certainly would fit right in there. Calorie laden snacks are made by dipping a chilled Mars bar into the batter normally used for frying fish because yeah. chocolate isn't fattening enough on its own, right? <laughs> the snack was apparently invented as a novelty item in the Haven chip bar in Scotland before growing in popularity. What Is this actually popular in uh, Britain? A deep fried Mars bar? Or is this kind of a novelty? Because I've never heard of this. But uh, I've certainly heard of deep fried stuff, you know? What do people think of frying next? Pizza? Oh no, wait. They've already done that. I was gonna say, <laughs> they deep fry pizza too. Glasgow, perhaps the least healthy food ever sold, is the deep fried pork sausage kebab. Number eight, black <laughs> pudding. It might have pudding in the name, but most people will be disappointed if they got served this for dessert. This sausage is typically made from a mixture of congealed pig's blood, lard, and oatmeal. No. 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 This is we. This is where it happens. This is where we officially start crossing the line. This is not okay. I thought it was a pudding. What do you mean pig's blood? What are we talking about here? Okay, I need to hear this once more. I thought it was pudding. What? What's going on? Pudding. It might have pudding in the name, but most people will be disappointed if they got served this for dessert. Oh, okay. I was... <laughs> my eyes glazed over and I didn't realize he was kind of acknowledging that there's no pudding in this pudding. Or... I don't know how you'd say that. This sausage is typically made from a mixture of... A sausage? Black pudding is a sausage. Okay. I... There's, there's gonna be so many things I'm gonna question. If I point out every little thing, <laughs> I will be here all day. Most people will be disappointed if they got served this for dessert. This sausage is typically made from a mixture of congealed pig's blood, lard, and oatmeal, and is Why? usually eaten fried on toast or as part of a full English breakfast. This is black pudding. Why would you eat that? Congealed blood? Do... I need British people to be honest with me here. Square with me. Is this actually something that a British person would eat willingly? <laughs> willingly. No one has a gun to their head. It's willing. <laughs> uh, if this is actually a British food, this must sound kind of crazy. And this is com and commonly. This is something British people eat willingly and commonly. This black pudding. Okay. Okay. I accept it. Is in it? Black puddings are not good to us. Lemon cheesecake, it is not. Black pudding is most likely to have originated from times of hardship, when butchers would use every last part of an animal for food. And while I mean, that makes sense. If it has some kind of historical context of like, back in, during a time period where times were very tough, food was limited, and you're taking, you know, whatever, whatever animal parts and remains that you might normally dispose of, like the blood, and uh, create something out of it, some kind of crazy pudding. I mean, you'd come, you'd be like a kind of a mad scientist whenever, whoever the guy is who created this monstrosity, don't get me wrong. He, <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to meet him, but I get, I get maybe there were some circumstances for why you would have this thing. Whilst it might not be to everyone's taste, it was acclaimed as a superfood in 2016. Okay. Number seven, okay. mince pies. Mince pies. Mince pies. I've heard of mince pies. Americans are vaguely, just barely aware of mince pies. Couldn't tell you what it means. And I don't think most Americans, they know the name, but they have no clue what a mince pie is. So, what is it? Originally, these short crust pastry pies were made with real mince meat, but nowadays the filling is- Oh, minced, minced meat? Like chopped up meat? Meat pie, okay. A mixture of dry fruit, peel, and the type of animal fat called suet. Fruit and animal fat. Is that good? See, here's, here's a problem with some of this stuff. I have to be honest here. I haven't tried a mince pie. I haven't tried black pudding or a scotch egg. Uh, they could very well be delicious, but that won't stop me. But they're, they're not a McDonald's hamburger, are they? <laughs> <laughs> that's, you know, that's the at, that's what I compare everything to, right? A true American dish, like a McDonald's hamburger or McMuffin. It's, it's not that, so it scares me. Ugh. <laughs> Eaten at Christmas, the pies are commonly spiced with cinnamon, cloves, and nutmeg to represent the gifts presented to Jesus by the three wise men. 
I mean, that right there, this picture of it, that looks good. Like, they did a good job. The presentation is pretty beautiful. I'll give you that. I just don't know if I, if I took a big old chomp out of this, out of that right there. My brain would be telling me it looks good. So maybe it would be good. Hmm. Am I coming around? Is it possible that I'm coming around? No. Visitors to the UK oh, are often no, put no. off by this dessert's name, but that's not necessarily a bad thing, is it? It just means that there's more life for the rest of us. Mince pot. Mince pie. Like, what kind of meat, though? Mince pie. I need to know a little more details about this before I pass judgment upon the minced pie. Mince pie, sorry, not minced. Mince pie. Uh, minced meat. And just to be clear, minced meat is chopped up dried fruit. Spirits. Oh, dang. Spices. Beef. Okay, okay, okay. I might be okay with this. During Christmas. Ah, oh, it's a Christmas season food. That's beautiful. Christmas just makes... Any food associated with Christmas automatically just gets kind of a pass, doesn't it? Uh, I'll give it a pass. Mince pie. Pie, anyone? Number six, bubble and squeak. Bubble and... Squeak? <laughs> What's this toad doing? What? Why is this frog saying the name of this food? Which I've never heard of. Bubble and squeak. Bubble and squeak. Could I even guess what that is? Uh, is it something you eat in the bathtub? <laughs> like, what? Bubble and squeak. Is it something you cook on a on a pan? It's boiling, so it's bubbling and squeaking. Like, am I at all on the right track here? Please help me. It's piping hot. This traditionally British dish is typically made from the leftovers of the equally traditional Sunday roast. Potatoes okay. and cabbage are its core ingredients, but other vegetables can be added, such as okay. carrots and Brussels sprouts. The possibilities are pretty much endless here. The but why is it called bubble and squeak? Is there has to be something fun, a part of this cabbage and whatnot, to bubble and squeak, to be called bubble and squeak. I just want to come up with as many reasons as possible to say bubble and squeak, because it's actually kind of fun. The potatoes are mashed into the cooked cabbage, then fried in a pan and eaten hot. The name bubble and squeak is set to come from the sound the ingredients make while they are cooking in the pan. And ah, okay. There we go, you know. There's something going on up here. I have some abilities of deduction, deducement, <laughs> if that's a word, if nothing else. Uh, still probably not enough to make me want to eat this bubble and squeak. We don't eat cabbage in America. It is isn't just not a vegetable that you ever are given. I don't know why, come to think of it. I mean, we eat cauliflower and lettuce, but not cabbage. I don't know, I don't know why that is. Hmm, actually makes me think a little bit. And, uh, what, what what was it? Cabbage and what? Pretty much endless. Oh, potatoes. <sighs> I like potatoes. I like potato a lot. Hmm. Uh, bubble and squeak kind of is, uh, so-so. Kind of. <laughs> That's the judgment. Effect they have on the diner's stomach when they reach it. Number five. To oh, wait. You put some sausage on it? In the pan. And not from the effect they have on the diner's stomach when they reach it. That, that looks good right there. Is bubble and squeak popular? Are these dishes like the most obscure British dishes ever? Because I would I would have no idea if they are or are not. Is this is this stuff all fairly common in Britain as food? It, it, it kind of seems like pretty nice stuff. Like you have to put some effort into making some of this stuff. It's kind of cool. Number five, toad in the hole. Yorkshire pudding, a humble batter made from eggs, flour, and milk or what? Yorkshire pudding. I've heard of that. I've heard of this. Shire. Yorkshire pudding. Look, Google's, like, first result. That's how famous Yorkshire pudding is. Americans are aware of Yorkshire pudding. Um, kind of like mince pie, but we don't know what it is, per se. Baked pudding made from a batter of eggs, flour, milk, water. Okay. It's just pudding. It's just really tasty pudding. Okay. Sounds nice. And the, the, the <laughs> I'm really dissecting this as scientifically as possible. To create the toad in the hole you, requires the prerequisite of understanding the Yorkshire pudding. Now I may proceed. Number five, toad in the hole. 
Yorkshire pudding, a humble batter made from eggs, flour, and milk or water, was okay. voted the top British regional dish in 2016. Be oh, Yorkshire pudding is just the top dish. Wow, okay. I, uh, I didn't know quite where that ranked on the hierarchy. I've heard of it. I've definitely heard of it. I've never tasted it. Uh, that is something I would be definitely willing to taste. Yorkshire pudding. Pudding is good, except maybe not black pudding. <laughs> I'd try it, for sure. Beating Cornish pasties and scones and cream. Or is that scones? But toad in the hole only increases the delicious factor by adding sausages to the dish. As for the origin of it's a- Wait, what are the components beside- no, it doesn't have Yorkshire pudding. That was just a separate point, or...? ...from eggs, flour, and milk or water was voted the top British regional dish in 2016. Okay. ...beating Cornish pasties and scones and cream. Or is that okay. scones? But toad in the hole only increases the delicious factor by adding sausages to the dish. Okay. As for the origin of its admittedly pretty left-field name, some people suggest... I feel like the narrator didn't quite describe it. Um... He was talking about a few things there. I need some clarity, and Father Google, <laughs> Papa Google never disappoints me. Um, toad in the hole, or sausage toad. Can I get some sausage toad here, please? Father is... <laughs> See, I'm already kind of becoming acclimated to what it would be like to live in a world where I had toad in the hole. It doesn't seem too bad. I can imagine it. Okay. English dish consisting of sausages in your- Oh, it does have Yorkshire pudding. That's what I didn't understand. Okay. It's sausages and pudding? With maybe gravy and vegetables. Sausage and pudding. That's not something that you would find in America. Nothing even remotely like that. I mean, in America, we only have chocolate pudding. <laughs> That's when I think, like, we only have chocolate pudding. Maybe some vanilla pudding. Uh, so... Without knowing what Yorkshire pudding tastes like, I can't really decide if putting sausage in it would be good or not. All I can imagine is putting sausage in chocolate pudding, which would be disgusting. <laughs> or would it? Maybe that'd be kind of good. Okay, this video is warping my mind. I don't know what's real anymore. Okay. It's that frogs were once included in the dish, and others that the finished meal looks a bit like toad submerged in mud. And honestly, what could oh. be more appetizing than that? Just to to it looks like a toad in mud. So you call it that. A toad in the hole. And you eat it. What? You know what this also makes me realize? America doesn't have any fun names for stuff. Toad in the hole is kind of cool. That's fun. Uh, what else did we have? Scotch eggs. Deep fried Mars bar. Right. Black pudding. Bubble and squeak. Bubble and squeak. There you go. And toad in the hole. That's fun. It's fun to say. I don't even care if it tastes good. <laughs> America doesn't have anything fun like that. Like, we don't name stuff cool things. What's up with that? Man, th that's bonus points for, uh, for Britain, just based off the names. No, defend you. Keep no, going. but sausage in the hole sounds fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Number four, steak and kidney pie. Steak. Okay, finally something that just the name is what it is. Steak and kidneys in a pie? I can- I can grasp this. In a pie? Sounds great. The kidneys, though, take a bit more explaining. Of course, offal is hot. Right. <laughs> I was so- Oh my goodness, let me explain myself. I was so confused by Toad in the Hole and Bubble and Squeak that I completely glossed over the fact that this has kid kidney in it. Kidney. First thing that comes to my mind is kidney kidney beans? Tell me it doesn't have kidney in it, organ. Americans, I know other cultures eat organs regularly, and my honest opinion is it's probably pretty healthy, and it's also a nice way to use all of the animal. You shouldn't just be throwing away all the organs, but I'm sorry. I blame my American upbringing. I was <laughs> giving me a free pass to chuck away the kidneys. I'm sorry, I'm not eating kidney. Hardly unique to Britain. When you consider though that the function of an animal's kidney is to produce urine, it makes it particularly hard to see why <sighs> anyone would spoil a steak pie by adding them into it. It is kidney. It's an organ. Steak and kidney pie. Hold on. Hold on everyone. And steak and shake. There's a good, <laughs> I could use some steak and shake right now. Instead I have to type in kidney pie. 
Oh, boy. It is savory pie, diced beef, diced kidney. My God. Okay, we're going to get through this. In Victorian times, oysters were used instead to bulk out the pie, but when shellfish prices rose, kidneys took their place. Okay. And surprisingly, the pies are still hugely popular in Britain. Not really? Really? Britain, come on. What's going <laughs> I mean, honestly, I respect, you know, like I was saying, the eating of animal organ. And I'm act I actually wish that was kind of a part of American culture and I was just raised to enjoy a good kidney in my pie, but I wasn't. So I have, Americans just have an immediate you know, distaste, a dis like a feeling of disgust off the bat towards any animal organ. Any, really. And uh, it's it's probably not, I, I know the logical side of me knows that that's not good, but I'm sorry. It's how I, my feeble American body was trained to not have the kidney pie. I pro probably would never try that. Not least on football stadium terraces. Steak and kidney pie. Steak and kidney pie. <laughs> Number three, the heck? spotted dick. Britain has more than its fair share of- Spotted dick. Spotted dick. Ah, this was in, a, in an American movie. As a joke. <laughs> because uh, that word means something else in America. Maybe in Britain, I don't know. But I've heard of this dish, spotted dick. I don't know what it is, man. I've heard of it. Ah, I feel like I used to know what it was. Dang it. Uh, I won't look it up. I'll control myself. I'll let the video explain. ...of unusual desserts, with bread and butter pudding providing a particularly perfect... Oh, I have to more, ...more than its fair share of unusual desserts, with... Oh, this is a dessert. I, I didn't know that at all. ...bread and butter pudding providing a particularly perfect example. But nothing raises eyebrows quite like the sweet... That looks good right there. Bread and butter pudding? Why can't that be on this list? Why can't- then I could say like, Oh yeah, looks great, looks delicious, and everyone would just be happy with me. And I- <laughs> I could just be like, oh, I love British food! Uh, cake! And pie, yeah. As long as there's no minced liver in it. Bread and butter pudding providing a particularly perfect example. But nothing raises eyebrows quite like the sweet suet pudding known as spotted dick. Oh, it's a pudding. British really love their pudding. So many different types. That's really interesting. Is that a is that a thing? Do you find that there are a lot of puddings in Britain? America really Gosh, I really only think of chocolate pudding. Of course it's chocolate. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Now that I realize how many puddings there are, we're really limiting ourselves. Ample. But nothing raises eyebrows quite like the sweet suet pudding known as spotted dick. The spotted okay. part of the name comes from the dried fruits added to the dish, but the dick okay. part is more of a mystery, and it is hard to think of a more off-putting name for an after-dinner treat. Oh, no one knows why it's called that? No. How? It, that's so unsatisfying. Spotted. Here we go. Recipe. Um, maybe if I look up a name? Where's the name come from? Traditional... Oh, how did it get its name? Yes. From the Latin word botellius, meaning sausage? Hmm. I don't know. Might take too long to look up. For now, I will allow it to be remain an enigma, a mystery, that I will wonder about for the rest of my days. Owing to this in 2018, the dessert was reportedly renamed Spotted Richard in the Houses of Commons Re Of course, Spotted Richard. Okay. Restaurant to spare diners blushes. That yeah, looks yeah. nothing like my spotted dick. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, haggis. The national dish of Scotland. Haggis. 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 Man, I know all these words. <laughs> I'm aware of these words, but I, I have no idea what haggis is. It's, is it not an organ of some sort? That's what I'm going with. Scotland, this savory pudding is made from the minced hot. Pudding? No. Another pudding? Man. Number two, haggis. The national dish of Scotland, this savoury pudding is made from the minced heart, liver, and lungs of a sheep, together with oatmeal and suet. A what are we doing with ourselves? What are we doing with ourselves? <laughs> Why are we mincing up all these organs into pudding and feeding them to our young? <laughs> well, honestly, uh, like I said, in all actuality, it's probably pretty healthy for you, pretty good for you. 
and uh, in the form of a pudding. So, again, maybe in another life I would eat the haggis, but it sounds honestly disgusting. <laughs> Sorry. The minced heart, liver, and lungs of a sheep. To heart, liver, and lungs. <sighs> yeah, okay. Together with oatmeal and suet. It used to be boiled in the sheep's own stomach, but oh. nowadays it is usually cooked in an artificial casing instead. Oh, it may okay. look like something created for a dare, yet fans of the dish compare its taste to peppery meatloaf. Americans, in particular, seem confused by this food, with yes. a 2003 survey suggesting a third of Scotland's US visitors thought haggis was a kind of animal. No. Yeah, 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 I thought it was, uh... Well, no, I didn't think it was a... <laughs> I didn't think it was a type of animal. I did think it was maybe made of one organ, and it, it's made of a couple different organs, and used to be cooked inside an organ. I wasn't totally off. Haggis. What's haggis? <gasps> Boy, you read my thoughts. Number one, <laughs> beans on toast. Ha! Beans. Got it. <laughs> one thing I got right in this uh, video is that British folk enjoy beans. I know this. Uh, Americans like beans. It kind of depends on where you live and who you ask. Uh, a lot, I th it's kind of a love-hate thing. I think Americans either find them disgusting or they really love beans. But I don't think no anywhere close to the extent as in Britain. Not even close. But beans would not be strange to see in America. I, that's what I'm trying to say. Of all these foods on this list, beans... I can wrap my brain around the, the concept of beans. This classic dish is arguably the nation's favorite, with Brits getting through a staggering two million tins of beans every single day. Big Wait, two million? With Brits getting through a staggering two million tins of beans every single day. Every day. Baked beans are also often eaten as part of a fry-up or on jacket potatoes, but in the hearts of the great British public, nothing beats simply adding them to toast. Yeah, that's not a thing in America. That's kind of the difference, the the popularity and casualness of just, ah, oh, beans on my toast for breakfast or, or whatever you would eat that for. <laughs> um, I'm not a huge bean head myself, a bean lover myself. So for that reason, I probably would not eat the beans on toast, but I think plenty of Americans would. So I think we can agree on beans. Oh. Beans, <laughs> Be <laughs> it just made me think. That, that's the great peacekeeper of this world. We could just unite the world by everyone's mutual love of beans. That just came to me. Ah, brilliant. Or if you're feeling particularly adventurous, you could always grate a little cheese on top. Considering the meal's simplicity, okay. it's fair to say that most non-Brits struggle to understand the reason for its immeasurable popularity. Yeah, is this very popular? I've been told this is very popular. I'm familiar with this dish. I just have never seen it in real life. And I kind of just have to go on the word of, you know, whatever random American media said something about British beans and toast. But it seems like it's popping up in this video and lots of other places. Probably true. So I guess uh, British folk really love their beans. Do you agree with our picks? Okay. Okay. That was uh, Watch Mojo UK. Oh, they have a UK version. That's cool. I like that. Oh, that was... Kind of what I expected, I guess. I don't, I think it was actually, honestly, a little more disgusting than I ever imagined. I expected a little distaste on my end. And I'll be perfectly honest, like, it's just, uh, all of it is based on, I think, my American kind of narrow uh, point of view. Honestly, I'll admit it. Um, I just haven't been exposed to eating 80% of the things on this list. So it's not really so much that they are strange. They're just strange to me because I'm lacking experience and experience of eating them. Whereas that's like, you know, I'm coming from that place. Whereas uh, Britain and other parts of the world are coming from a place of they get to enjoy all these interesting foods that I mean, sorry, but I'll probably never have. <laughs> well, let's just be honest here. Um, but it, it just makes it super interesting. And I wonder if there are foods in America like that British people might think the same about. 
I, I can't honestly think off the top of my head anything I think that I eat, which is really strange and like American, uh, that British people could watch a video of and be like, oh, that's disgusting. Cause, because I think that would actually be very interesting and pretty funny. Anyway, uh, I enjoyed this list. I enjoyed learning about these foods. They did not disappoint. Uh, and I'm a little scared. To be <laughs> so, if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed this reaction, feel free to give it a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos kind of like this, with me looking at, reacting to British, UK, um, culture, things, stuff i never seen, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching, and see you next time.